Hello, I'm Brian, and in this video, I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how to start a game of Wasteland 2 Director's Cut on Supreme Jack difficulty. Uh, this video will cover uh, some a little bit on how to create your characters, and then we'll jump right into the game. And uh, after about uh, 20 to 30 minutes or so, you will be able to have a a cer certain amount of cash and then you'll also get some sweet loot before you even start your first mission to the radio tower. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here we'll go to new game. Uh, we are going to create a character. For demonstration purpose, I will be using a uh, solo character. Uh, Alright, here it is. Okay, so this is a character that I have created uh, before this. Uh, I started recording this video. Uh, these are not important. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, the attribute points, uh, the distribution. I have another video that talks about it. And uh, I, I will also be making another, uh, some more videos on how to create ranges. Uh, however, to do what I'm going to do in this video, uh, there are two a general skills that you really need to take and that is outdoorsman of two and perception of one now perception one is mandatory you really need to start with perception one uh, in order to do whatever we are going to do in this video and for the outdoorsman two now if you are going to recruit uh, angela death on the starting area then you would not need to uh, have outdoorsman of a two in your starting ranges. Uh, however, if you are like me and uh, you are going to start a, a solo playthrough that does not have any uh, recruiting ranges uh, and companions as well, then you will need to have outdoorsman two on you as well. Now, another tip that I would like to say is that you want to have a field medic and then also surgeon uh, at the start of your game. Uh, because once you select this, uh, you have like one level, you don't have to have it on like two or three, you just have to have one level of field medic or end or one level of uh, surgeon. Uh, you will get uh, some supplies uh, that is related to the skills like a um, uh, the surgeon that revives and then there is also the uh, a couple of medic packs to start and they are pretty expensive uh, in the early game so you will want to consider these two uh, on your starting characters uh, so to make sure that you have plenty of supplies when you are heading particularly into a game that is a supreme drug difficulty uh, quirks I'm not going to talk about it too much uh, so yeah, make sure you have perception and outdoorsman covered. So let's go. Uh, the Wayson is a dangerous place and you can recruit up to four rangers to join your squad. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Yes. And we are going to go on Supreme Jack difficulty. Uh, this is not going to be an issue uh, because uh, we are not going to be entering any combat. Uh, so whether you are starting from the lowest difficulty, uh, the rookie one, or to the supreme jet difficulty, uh, the highest, uh, it makes uh, very little difference. All right, we're going to skip these. Thank you, recruits. Right, uh, from the start, we are going to meet with General Fargus. Uh, he is going to give us a little bit of uh, background information. It, yeah, I, we are going to skip you, through oh, this. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. And then yes, all right. on your radio. Once you prove yourself, the Citadel All right, good goodbye. Your recruits. Okay, so the first thing you do is going to pick the shuffle up with you. Afterwards, you are going to go past the door of the Ranger Citadel that is not open to you right now because you have to finish the first uh the first mission and then you can see here a uh, corporal selvers which we are not going to interact with just yet now once we are in uh, you remember that we have the shovel you can right click on this and then bring the shovel in so you can start digging up stuff 
Uh, there are four mounds of dirt that you can dig in the starting area and you can get scrape and you can get junk. Uh, these are very important for the start. Alright, so let's go this way first. Alright, dig up this mound as well. And you are going to get some scrape, you get some ammo which is nice and then some more junk to sell. Alright, so now you can see here we start in here uh, where the rangers have buried the ace and then we get past the citadel entrance and also uh, the supply shop as well. Uh, once you head to the left side of this map, we are here. Uh, you can see the, uh, the, see the firing range here. Uh, this door you can use a uh, lockpick or brute force on it or you can just use a weapon to attack it. It doesn't have any uh, consequences uh, whether you are going to open it uh, however you want. So yes. Okay, so this is the first crate that you are going to interact with. Uh, it contains a random generated uh, weapons uh, that is already an upgrade compared to what you are having right now in your squad. Uh, you can just save it here and then just try to save low until uh, you get the optimal weapons. But for right now, hey, Mangala, it's not bad at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can get something like uh, an upgraded assault rifles or uh, an R270, which is a good sniper rifles uh, in the start of the game as well. All right, so there is also a uh, weapon, uh, a bull, uh, ammunition cache here that may or may not have something that you want. All right, once you have done all these, uh, you will want hey, to go to the. Mind picking up that can over all right, there for right. me? Okay. Think there's some water in there. Yeah, Rook is a jerk. <laughs> Alright, so uh, you can go to the right side of the map as well. And then there is also there are also two uh, mounds of dirt that you can dig up as well. Alright, so let's see. Okay. Uh, fingers crossed I get a ranger star from this one. It may not happen, but yeah. It did not happen. But it does have a shotgun for us. And then a, a dynamite stick as well. Pretty good. Yep, so you can see here we already get a weapon, uh, two weapons actually. Uh, the mangler and then also uh, a bunch of junk that we can sell. And then there is also the a little bit of bullets uh, as well. Now you can see here the pocket medic pack. Um, if you have to spend money to buy it, uh, it is very expensive. You do not have a lot of scrape uh, at the start of the game. So it is not advised that you spend money on it. Instead, you just have to have the skills uh, of field medic available uh, when you create your character and you will get it for free, which is a huge, huge, huge boost uh, to your survivability in the wasteland. Okay, now to the far right side. Uh, God damn it, Ace. You never should have put down the wrench and picked up the gun. All right, so you, he, you can see here uh, Angela Dev. You can talk to her and then get some uh, background information. Once you finish the talking to her, uh, she will offer to join your squad. Um, I'm not going to have her join uh, because uh, this is a solo playthrough. However, uh, you, if you are... Uh, uh, playing through this game for the first time or maybe you are having trouble uh, getting through the game Angela Dev is definitely someone you wanted to have in your team uh, because she is already level 7 uh, and also she has pretty decent skills uh, in combat shooting and uh, also a uh, a blunt weapon uh, skills as well uh, she have a huge uh, HP pool as well of 92 Compared to that of 38, <laughs> she's basically a monster <laughs> compared to us like babies. However, we are not going to recruit her. Uh, if you recruit her uh, as well, I've mentioned before, you will get the Outdoorsman 2 skill as well. So yeah, I definitely recruit her if you want. I won't be able to do that right now because I'm going to play a solo playthrough. 
All right, so once we have dug up everything, uh, we are going to return to uh, Corporal Selva here. Uh, we are going to get some background information from her, uh, which uh, does not <laughs> matter much. Now, we'll click sell junk, uh, which doesn't give us a lot. And then we will sell this sort of shotgun, uh, this uh, ammo that we are not going to use, because we also have this uh, uh, very good uh, medic pack as well. We no longer need the pain reliever. Uh, now you can see, uh, most likely, uh, once you're done all that, your squad scrap will be 200 or up. In this case, you will want to grab the shitty radiation suit, and uh, it offers a uh, plus two radiation protection. This will almost uh, deplete the whole uh, uh, cash deposit that you have. Uh, however, I guarantee you this is going to pay for itself very soon. So, yep, that is what we are going to buy. And once you bought it, uh, click to uh, double click to uh, equip it. And then you can see from here that our radiation resistance is 2. It will become important. Uh, all right, let's see. Do I have any more money as well? $65 for this Akita figurine. But we don't have enough money. Yeah, we'll return for it later. Okay, yeah. The first thing that you buy is this uh, radiation suit to re uh, increase your radiation resistance to 2. Alright, so with that all done, let's head out to the wasteland. Alright. Ranger Team Echo, this is Ranger Command. Come All right, let's talk to uh. Don't let that ten four echo. Uh. All right. So once we're done here, uh. All right. Let's see. So when you exit the Ranger Citadel, you wanted to head north. Uh. Now you're going to the radio tower. However, we are not going to go there just yet. We are directly traveling north. And then at around here, you can see uh, th there is this mysterious shrine. Uh, you need to have a one level in perception in order to find this shrine. Of course, this shrine can be uh, discovered through other means, uh, which means that maybe you don't need the first level of perception, right? No. Uh, <laughs> on that account, this is wrong. Because once you are inside this... Um, uh, this mysterious shrine, you still need the level 1 in perception just to spot this uh, very important mount of dirt here. Very important, uh, I would say this is the most important uh, uh, dirt of mount <laughs> in this game uh, because... Let's take it up. Alright, it contains a uh, another weapons that weapons upgrade that you can uh, obtain here with the uh, with the related amount of uh, ammo as well however it also have a fixed loot of this Lacomatic 4 to uh, 0 uh, which adds plus one in outdoorsman this is the single most uh, important trinket uh, that you are going to be using in the start of your journey now, you can see, uh, if you have uh, Angela Death with you, uh, you wanted to equip the Lacomatic uh, 420 uh, to her. Otherwise, you want to have the have this uh, trinket uh, equipped to the Ranger that have the Outdoorsman. So you can see here, uh, the Outdoorsman has been boosted from uh, level 2 to level 3. Which is important, uh, it will help us uh, dodge uh, most of the random encounters, which is what actually kills you in the <laughs> in the start of the at the start of the game, and then uh, it also allows you to be put into a uh, better position uh, once the combat uh, initiates as well. So, pretty important skill. Uh, I would say it is essential for you to have uh, when you are traveling through the wasteland. 
Alright, so you can see here there is also a shrine here. Uh, most of the guys uh, you visit will advise you not to interact with any shrines until you recruit uh, all seven of your rangers. However, I would advise you to interact with this one, just this one. Uh, because it uh, gives you uh, valuable experience and uh, allows you to almost level up. So let's get to it. Alright, so you can see here, uh, this yellowed bar is uh, filled with uh, almost to the brink. And uh, once we have a chance to level up, it will be very, very uh, beneficial to us as well. Alright, once we are done, let's exit to the, to the desert. Okay, now uh, we are done with this shrine, let's continue our journey. We are not heading to the radio tower, but we are heading in the general direction of it. Now you can see here there is an oasis, uh, let's refill. And then you do not want to travel to the radio tower just yet, uh, instead you wanted to travel to this area. Uh, where you can find an other catch as well. So let's loot it. Okay, another. Uh, I have received the, a lot of the times this is an M2 as well, uh, which is really bad. Uh, I think this is a, a random catch, but for some reason I keep getting M2s from it. <laughs> and also, you can see there are some clothing as well. Uh, you can get some pretty decent clothing. Uh, these two seems like crap, <laughs> but there are sometimes some very pretty clothing that you can get uh, from this cache as well. And then uh, there are also a variety of uh, bullets here and then a stick of dynamite. Perfect. Let's get them all. Alright, once we are done here, uh, let's head back to the oasis, refill, and now we are going to go back to the ranger citadel. Uh, Alright, so you can see here, uh, before uh, we enter the citadel, we encounter dangerous raiders. But the run percentage is 100% because we have so high in outdoorsman skill, it gives us a 100% chance to escape this encounter. Uh, so we are going to escape it. We are not going to do any combat at all because it is not cost efficient. All right, let's enter. Now you realize that we have grabbed a bunch of uh, weapons that we can't use. And then uh, if they are of use to you, just uh, equip them to whomever is uh, appropriate and then uh, sell the, the weapons that are left behind. All right, trainees, I'm taking time out from the dispatch desk to pound you into shape. So All pay right. attention. Fall in. Okay, let's talk to uh, sellers here. And then again, click sell junk. And then sell these, sell these. Uh, sell the bullets that are not usable for us and then uh, because we don't use the basic trauma kit uh, sell them as well uh, don't sell the basic trauma kit on yourself <laughs> just don't do that uh, for me because I'm just using a single uh, a ranger uh, the trauma kit is useless because nobody will be alive around if I go down to help revive me so yeah <laughs> for me, it is useless. For you, it is <laughs> invaluable. So don't do that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to sell this. So you can see here, the squad scrape has already go back to, uh, to the 200 uh, level. You can uh, go ahead and buy some ammo here as well. Uh, but uh, because we are not going to enter into combat, uh, we are not going to do that. Instead, we are going to spend uh, $65 to buy this Akita figurine. Alright, let's see. Are there any other trinkets that we can use as well? Alright, let's see. No, I do not think so. Yep. Alright, so this Akita figurine uh, is very important because it gives you plus one in Animal Whisperer. Uh, now, you can notice that we do not have any. 
However, if we equip it, then we will have a one level of Animal Whisperer, which is very helpful. However, we are going to be using the Outdoorsman uh, Trinket at the moment. Alright, so again, let's head out. And now, uh, this second trip, we are going to the Rail Nomads camp. Uh, we are going to get the $1,000 uh, cash. And then we are going to get some more uh, weapons uh, as well. Alright, so if you are trying to reach the Rail Nomads camp, uh, which is up north around here, uh, don't go directly through uh, this uh this valley because uh, it that there is a level three radiation. Uh, instead, you should be like me. Uh, you just go uh, to the west right here, uh, run, and then just go through all the way here. All right. Uh, okay. So. All right. I'll end this for yes. All right, all right, and this. Oh god! All right, so you can see here uh, to the northwest of the Ranger Citadel, uh, at around this area, and uh, you can see there is a cache that contains a lot of uh, game cartridges. Uh, just take one of them. Don't take all; you will be overburdened <laughs> right away. Uh, just take one of them, and you can see we have take. <laughs> we have already gotten a hundred of them. Uh, which is very heavy as well, 10 pounds, but eh, whatever. Uh, this is your ticket to become the millionaire! Or, well, maybe not that much, but it is the very important source of cash uh, once we reach Rail Nomad's camp. Alright, once we get that, uh, we go to the oasis to refill our water. Uh, be very mindful of whatever uh, water amount you are using, I have uh, forgotten to uh, replenish our stock. Alright, and yeah, <laughs> uh, I have forgotten to uh, replenish the water before and take uh, damage from it. It is not pleasant. Okay, so you can see here uh, we have reached this uh, area in the map as well. Uh, so there are oases on the way that can refill your canteen, uh, which is very important. Now we will continue up north. The great god is Beres, but All right, stop. All right, in this little valley here, there is another cache as well, which contains weapons and armors and stuff. All right, uh, brass knuckles, pretty crappy. A uh, hundred of scrap is very, oh my god. All right, stop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, uh, so there are some weapons as well. Uh, it is a random piece of uh, weapon, I think. Uh, so sometimes I, I, if I remember correctly, I get a mangler here <laughs> before. Uh, Brass Knuckles is pretty bad for us. Uh, if you do not have a brawling uh, character, uh, it is a little bit of a waste. And then there are a couple of... Uh, uh, bullets uh, replenishment as well which is nice and then there is this uh, clothing as well which is good for selling so let's get it all all right we'll go down a little south and try to reach the the um, rail nomads camp this is a very good demonstration. You can see here, we meet dangerous raiders approaching our station, uh, our, our position. And run is 75% or you can choose to attack. Now, these raiders are unbeatable for us right now. They are unbeatable. They will blow you up. They will kill you in one shot. And then <laughs> they will do all sorts of uh, horrible stuff. Uh, so you can see here, uh, the run... Uh, Chance is 75%, which is not good, right? I, I mean, uh, uh, if you do not have any outdoorsman skill, this will be 0%. However, we have 3, and then we didn't level up uh, at all because you can see the, uh, the little experience bar here is f not filled up uh, just yet. Uh, however, we have a decent chance of a 75% chance to escape this encounter. 
Uh, so we want to avoid it, right? Because I've said it, it's unbeatable. However, uh, in, in this run, you wanted to click attack. And once we are in combat, you will, well, not in combat, but inside the combat uh, map, you will understand why I would say that it is better to uh, try to uh, attack them instead of running away. So you can see here, uh, the enemy is likely around here or around here. And we are positioned at the start of the map where we can just click on this and exit this counter. Now, uh, I would like to point out that if you try to run away and then there is a 75% chance. So it is not a 100% chance that you can run away. And then if you fail to run away, you instead of placing you around this uh, exit and counter uh, portal here, you will be instead placed somewhere around here or here and be trapped and you have to be you will be forced to engage with the uh, random raiders in uh, before you can exit this map which is pretty bad so yeah in order to avoid this kind of chances uh, I will be uh, when you have a decent chance like 75% chance to uh, avoid the encounter and the whole point is to try to avoid the encounter just click attack and then just exit this map just like that <laughs> if i remember correctly there are also some that are very hard and uh, it has like 50 percent chance of uh escape uh fingers crossed we didn't oh my god <laughs> another as well very very good uh, demonstration here uh, again we'll click attack and then uh, we will be exiting the encounter perfect all right uh, let's head into the real nomad's camp the rnc there are uh, a lot of stuff that you can do in this place uh, where it nets you cash it nets you a couple more uh, Equipments as well. Hey all, this is Libby Parker. All right. Once you're in here, uh, so you are in this of the map, and then you just head right, and you can see here there is a mount to take. Uh, it's just a uh, random cash and junk. So every little bit of cash helps. Uh, at the start of the game. Uh, all right. So. It is a one-way road, so let's continue down the way. All right, in here we should be meeting uh, Ralphie's girlfriend. Please, stranger. Yep, Please yep, yep, yep. All right, we are going to save Ralphie from uh, drowning. Help! Help! I'm drowning. Okay, so in here. Uh, Ralphie yeah, is drowning Ralphie's and there is the a time counter. Bridge. If you don't Please save him uh, quickly enough, uh, he will drown and you don't want that. Please, All right, so we'll uh, use I the shuffle uh, to push this totem, not this one, but this one, uh, to save him. Thanks for saving me, strangers. Okay. Have you seen my, my friend Jesse? All right. Uh, we are going to when skip these. Uh, the yeah, there are some skill uh, speech skill checks uh, Bye, and as well. Again. All right, because we have done this, uh, we get a little bit of uh, XP as well. So let's call in for the uh, level up as well. Okay. Uh, now I wanted to point out uh, this totem can also be pushed down as well and uh, by pushing down this totem you will knock Ravi on the head and then drown him so don't do that please <laughs> be nice be nice all right now uh, there are also this uh, little mount here that uh, will give you a very uh, high value pieces of uh, of trash uh, well, I shouldn't call it trash because it is like a turquoise, but yeah, it is for selling. Uh, there is no particular uh, use for this 
uh, this little piece of uh, item. All right, so let's head back out right now. Uh, all right, so you can see here, uh, we have reached uh, from the wasteland into here. We have done some digging around around here, and then we have come here to the to this lake here to save Ralphie. Now, we uh, as you head into here, there are two different ways. Uh, there are the there is the Topican who is uh, uh, injured by a bomb uh, we cannot interact with him don't get near him because there will be an event trigger and then you will be on another time uh, time to encounter as well uh, where you need to save him with a uh, surgeon skills uh, however you won't be able to because this is the start of the game you simply don't have the skills to save him uh, so just don't trigger it instead we will head down this way so you can see here, uh, Jesse is uh, waiting around uh, this uh, little playground, and you see this uh, little blinking uh, thing. Uh, just shoot it. Shit! What was that? Was that a bomb? Oh, you just saved my life. Thanks, Rangers. Yeah, there is also uh, 52 uh, XP to be gained uh, because you have finished a quest as well, uh, which is very nice. Uh, this is also part of the part of the uh, storylines that allows you to help uh, make peace between uh, the Dopikans and the Edgesons as well. Uh, you you have to save Jesse, and then there are also some other steps that you have to do as well. Uh, saving Jesse is one of the things that you know, like adds more points to it to help you uh, reach a peaceful resolution of the real Nomad's camp. Alright, so once we are here, we will continue down the road a little bit and find this uh, little uh, mound of dirt here. So let's take it up. I don't think you need any uh, perceptions for this mound. It is pretty uh, unfortunate uh, because... Uh, in some of my playthroughs, it usually net us a farmers, uh, which is a very good assault rifle. Uh, instead, we get the midnight special. Uh, whatever. <laughs> All right. So once we are here and dug up this mound, we will continue this way. But no one listens to you. Uh, we are going to the hobo camp. So you can see here, uh, there is a a T section here where we are going to head north. So yeah, in in the map we are here. So uh, again, a little bit of recap. We enter here, dug up a mount here, and then we head here to help uh, uh, to the lake uh, where we help save Ralphie, and then we dug up a mount here for the little turquoise that we get, and then we stick to the right side of the road here up. Uh, disarm the this bomb here, get the uh, little weapons upgrade cache here, and then we just take a left turn to this T section where we are going to head north. All right, all the way. Don't go into the hobo camp. Just just straight up north. All right, stop. <laughs> So here, uh, besides the little water pool, uh, you will be able to loot the body and get a uh, Ranger Star of Hellraiser. Um, it is a quest weapon. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say quest weapon, oh my god. It's a quest item that you can return to uh, Fargus, uh, General Fargus uh, for some XP as well. There is also this uh, logbook, uh, which we are going to take as well. Another... Uh, item that we can return to Fargus. Alright, and... Okay, so you can see here there is a tortoise and there is this mount here as well. We'll take out this mount first. Again, uh, use a sponge of junk and then there is also these... Uh, uh, a little bit of ammo and then a scrape as well. Okay, perfect. 
Now you can see here the tortoise, uh, you can use brute force to help the tortoise up on its feet or you can use uh, Animal Whisper and uh, previously you can use a shuffle I don't think it works right now because if we use the shuffle it doesn't it doesn't do anything however we are going to equip the Akita figurine here and then now we have one level of Animal Whisperer you can see here 26% very hard critical failure of 35% uh, however in my testing a couple of times of testing, uh, critically failing this uh, encounter will result in nothing. Uh, instead, uh, you can just keep trying until the tortoise uh, is back on its feet. Now, it is back on its feet. You can see right here. Uh, it will start walking at any time soon. All right. So, if this is your, uh, I don't think you wanted to follow this tortoise uh around uh what this tortoise does is that it will like uh walk around the map you can follow the tortoise and then uh until the end of the path uh this tortoise will die but it will refill a uh sort of a treasure uh dirt mound that you can dig up as well um for this event to completely happen you will have to stay in the map once you exit the map, the event ends. And if the tortoise haven't reached that uh, specific place uh, and and dies to trigger the uh, the revealing of that dirt mount, you are done. Uh, you won't be able to get the tortoise to work again. Uh, so yeah, and it takes around twenty minutes, I think, for the tortoise to reach its destination. So you you would say well, that that is a awful uh, amount of time, right? However, there are a couple of things that we wanted to do in uh, the Real Nomads camp as well. So we can leave the tortoise uh, to his own device uh, because uh, even if we are not following him, uh, he will continue his uh, little journey. All right, so. Once we are here, uh, we are going to get Ralphie. Alright, so here we are going to enter the, the village. And Alright, so you can see this is the place where the injured man is. Uh, however, in, instead of triggering the injured man uh, event here we are going to we have just uh, walk all the way around and enter the village uh, from the back side all right so we are heading into this house okay now you can see here Libby Ralphie and uh, Samuel Cole all right so thanks for saving me Rangers let's talk to oh, Libby Rangers. here I heard what you did for my Ralphie. Thank you. So now you can see here, uh, because we have saved the Ralphie and uh, now we have talked to Libby, uh, we get another uh, XP boost as well. I would give you. And uh, Libby here will be offering a Ralphie as a uh, recruit. Uh... He's my dear. All right. I know. What do you say? All right. So said we will take him. And Ralphie oh, will follow you. Now come along. Gee, that's great. This place is nice and all, but I'd rather be out having adventures with you. All right, so you can see here, uh, Ralphie is not going to be sticking with us for long. So I'm going to confiscate the brass knuckles with uh, for myself, and I'm going to confiscate this uh, pain reliever for myself as well to sell. All right, let's move out. Okay, once you are here, uh, try not to go from this way. Uh, exit the village uh, where uh, the way you came from. All right, once you are at this point, continue to go south. So you can see there are more uh, topicans around here. Uh, All right. 
Okay, so... Oh my god, stop. <laughs> Alright, so once we are headed directly south almost to here, you can see uh, the uh, there is a bar here and then there is the holiday store as well. However, we are not going to uh, visit the store right away. Instead, we are heading to Corex Arcade, which is here. Notice that uh, throughout all the minutes of play, we haven't uh, encountered. Well, we haven't entered any I used combat. To be in this place all the time. Then I met Jesse. <laughs> all right, so let's talk to Corex. Greetings, Rangers. Welcome to the Corex Arcade, where we have all the latest coin-op games. To what do I owe this pleasure? Okay, so uh, talking to Corex, uh, you can get a little bit of. Uh, um, background information for the real nomads camp as well, and then uh, that they that he's our end boss. Hangs out with his mini bosses at the town hall. I'm afraid of him, but he doesn't even bother me. I don't think he's ever come in here. Did you know he's only got one arm? Okay, all right. So remember the uh, game cartridge that we have uh, we have retrieved uh, from the northwest. Uh, from the northwest of the uh, Ranger Citadel, we can give it to Corex. Sorry, all right, cause so we said we found an ET cartridge. What? There are some things you just don't joke about in life, my friend. Uh, no joke, we really defined it. You have found my holy grail. So I'll give you my firstborn if I have one. a thousand scrap. This will have to do instead. Clay wizard figurine. Uh, Having more than one would just come again anytime. All right, so you can see here, uh, we have already given uh, the ET cartridge uh, to Corex. Uh, th the next 99, we are going to just uh, dump it uh, or sell it, whatever. I'll just dump it because uh, it is very heavy. <laughs> uh, instead, they, uh, Corex will give us a thousand scrape. And then also this clay figurine as well, which is... Uh, uh, useful. It gives a uh, two in perception for a minus five in armor. Just make sure you don't enter combat with this uh, equipped because uh, in combat you can't uh, equip trink uh, uh, switch out trinkets, uh, <laughs> which is kind of obnoxious uh, uh, because it will bring your armor level down all the way to minus four or minus five or something. So yeah, you really don't want to do that. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, so because we have a little bit of cash, we are going to head to uh, the holiday store. It is actually a weapons uh, store. All right, there are mounds and uh, these mounds can be dug up uh, at will. Yep. And then, da, da, da. I think there are some. All right, let's see. There are some houses. Uh, and we are. All right, let's see. If I remember correctly, we can enter this house too. All right. Yeah, there are some. Uh, you can loot some of the. Oh, to Android stream of electric ship. <laughs> All right. Let's see if there are any more new stuff here. Uh, okay, let's head out. This is not the room we are looking for. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I believe it's this one actually. So it is the house that is directly opposite of the uh, holiday store, I think. All right, yeah, there is a safe that we cannot open uh, because we don't have the the safe cracking skills. So let's head out. I think there is a a weapon stash uh, hidden around somewhere, but I 
do not remember which one is it so we'll have to <laughs> walk around to find out a little bit not that you really have to get it i mean yeah this is the weapon sketch oh separate rocket and a grenade perfect uh let's make sure it doesn't go to ralphie <laughs> Yeah, because we are going to lose him very soon, so we do not want to do that. And then let's see. Oh, there is a. It is a uh, a box rigged with bombs, so we are not going to open that. And then there is a safe, and we can't open it. So let's head out. If you have the skills to open the boxes, uh, do do so <laughs> uh, because uh, that there are I I remember correctly that there are no consequences uh, to uh, doing this I should wait out here mr. holiday doesn't like me yeah there is no point in having Ralphie wait outside all right we can talk to uh, mr. holiday here get to go trade and then we sell junk and then we will be selling this uh, selling all the stuff that uh, we simply cannot use uh, These are not going to be used by me uh, And then the pain reliever we don't use uh, These are not uh, uh, The turquoise you can sell here as well uh, Do keep the um, uh, trinkets around because they are very useful And uh, Anything else? No Okay, so from here uh, This is likely the first uh, weapons merchant that you can buy upgrade from now you will notice that uh, aside from the G43 uh, other weapons like this M4 carbine or this Mark uh, Marikov or the pipe or this makeshift cleaver these weapons can be obtained from random encounters so I do not suggest you buy it however this bulletproof shirt here free armor uh, $300, well worth the price, uh, so you can just buy it and uh, help you ease your uh, pressure uh, in the early part of the game. You you can also uh, refill some of the ammo here as well if you have uh, used it uh, for some reason. Uh, in here we are going to grab these. Uh, because we have so much scrape lying around, we are going to buy whatever we need right now. Uh, let's see. Okay. Alright, I think that's it. And now, uh, after we have uh, talked to him and select the trade option, uh, Mr. Holiday will also mention that uh, there are some real thieves that uh, have taken his supplies. So you can just talk about it and get some more uh, background information. And then you also get a quest to retrieve his... Uh, uh, retrieve the uh, the supplies as well. Uh, you can see here there are some uh, boxes. You don't want to touch it because they are rigged with explosives. <laughs> so don't do that, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we are done. Uh, so let's head back out. Okay. So a little bit of recap. So down this road to the south, we have reached the Quarex Arcade, uh, where we exchanged uh, the cartridge for a hundred uh, a thousand uh, dollars, and then there is this uh, house uh, directly across the holiday store that also have weapons, and there is a uh, explosive rigged box. Uh, don't touch it. <laughs> if you do not have the skill to uh, disarm the bomb. And also, we have had to the holiday store to do some uh, unloading of our, uh, of our trash and then also the piece of turquoise as well and get a little bit of scrape uh, for our further use. Now, we are continuing to go south and then go a little east to reach this part of the map. So, uh, let's see. Yep, we will be passing a uh, power generator here as well.
All right, so you can see here there is an entrance here. Uh, so this is the meeting hall, and then there is the generator that we just passed through. Uh, so we ran from the holiday store uh, all the way to southeast, all the way down here to the no man's land. Now, uh, I'll show you something. Um, why we are here, uh, let's equip this first. And also, uh, we are going to switch out the uh, uh, trinket to this uh, clay figurine as well. Now, uh, this is the place where the tortoise is going to walk towards. And uh, so we are going to go in. But when you go in, try to stick to the uh, left side of the wall. You just hug around the left side of the wall uh, because there are some landmines here. I think that level 3 perception is enough to, to, to find it. So you can see here there are some landmines. Uh, the landmines will not be triggered by the tortoise because it will also uh, hug the left side of the wall. Uh, Alright, so let's head all the way in. The tortoise are quite small to, uh, to be spotted, uh, so it's kind of hard. Alright, so all the way to this dead end. Uh, where there is a waterfall. So in the in the map, it is uh, marked right here. So you can see here the entrance to the no man's land. And then there is on the right hand side of the road, there are some uh, landmines here that you would want to avoid. Now, if you have someone with explosive uh, uh, demolition skills where they have the perk uh, improvised, uh, all right, improvised explosive. Where is it? All right, improvised explosive. You will have a chance to recover grenade type weapons when disarming booby traps and mines. So you will want to leave these mines alone uh, once you have uh, someone with uh, the improvised explosives. Either if you have uh, uh, recruiter Takayuki or you have your damage expert just pick up this uh, this perk. You can have him or her disarm uh, these landmines uh, to get a chance to have grenades and uh, dynamite sticks and stuff. They are quite useful early in the game. Uh, in the later part of the game is less useful. However, they are also uh, uh, they are not just useful inside uh, the combat situation. It is also useful when you are outside of it because uh, you can blow uh, open safe or doors or fences or whatever if you do not have the appropriate uh, brute force uh, skills to do it. Alright, so the tortoise will take a little bit of time coming here. I'll call in the level up as well. Um, Alright, so I will be pausing the video here. Uh, for you, no time will have passed. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Yeah, so I, I will be pausing the video here, and then uh, once the tortoise, uh, the tortoise has uh, finally arrived, I will be showing you that uh, right away. And we are back. Uh, so <laughs> if you notice, uh, there is a little bit of ping pong here. Uh, I pause the video and then I walk around here and then the tortoise is here. Uh, it will take a little bit of time. Uh, we will be accompanying the tortoise to his uh, final resting place. <laughs> um, so you you will, uh, once you enter this no man's land, you'll hear a uh, a broadcast where they talk about the Wachitan armor. Uh, you can't get the Wachitan armor. Uh, through this uh, tortoise. However, you will be getting some sort of uh, heavy armor uh, from that stash, and then you you also get a weapon. I think uh, a random generator weapon as well, uh, which might be beneficial to. Uh, it is likely to be a huge upgrade to your uh, to your squad already. Uh, unfortunately, I have yet to get the uh, farmers uh, the FAA MAS. Uh, that uh, awesome, awesome piece of assault rifles that uh, uh, that I am looking for. 
Uh, I fingers crossed. Uh, I might get it from this turtle, <laughs> but uh, considering my luck, uh, it is unlikely to happen. Um, sorry for this. Uh, a little bit of waiting. Uh, <laughs> we'll just have to uh, accompany this tortoise. I really wanted to show you that the tortoise. Uh, what what will happen when the tortoise reach this uh, uh, this part of the map? So you can see here, uh, the first time I played this game and I know about this tortoise, I actually followed the tortoise around for like 20 minutes uh, until it reaches uh, this uh, uh, the the waterfall here. Uh, it's fun the first time. Not so much the second time. However, you can see that uh, we have uh, done quite a lot of stuff. Uh, we have met with Korax. We have uh, talked with the holidays, uh, uh, Mr. Holiday, and about the uh, the stuff. And then we also have done some uh, buying and selling as well. So uh, once you've done all that and then come here, it won't be a very long wait uh, as well. As a reminder, again, do not exceed this map. Uh, if you exceed this map, the tortoise disappear and you will not get the loot. Uh, also, you have to be inside the game where you will have to have the game uh, active uh, as the active window at all times, or otherwise time will not pass and the tortoise will not move. All right, oh. So very sad, the tortoise just flip over and dies. However, you can see here, there is a mount uh, here that appears. Now, in previous uh, version of the game, uh, there is a bug where this mount cannot be um, interacted with. Uh, I have played it through quite a number of, uh, of times where they have updated it. And right now, I understand that the PC version should not have this problem. However, if you have problems interacting with this stash, do not worry. You just uh, save up the game and then exit to the main menu and load back the save and you should be able to uh, interact with it. So let's take it up. All right, so you can see here, uh, there is this uh, heavy armor that I am talking about. You can see on the uh, right hand corner of the description the steel plated armor it is a uh, with the little electric sign on it that means that it is a uh, conductive plate if someone shoots you with an energy weapon uh, you are going to take uh, uh, increase the damage and I am glad that I actually get the farmers <laughs> as well so which is very important um, uh, it is a huge upgrade to the assault rifle as well, so we are going to grab these. Perfect. All right, and we are going to switch off to uh, look at this building, this farmers. This will, uh, this farmers will actually help you through the uh, first half of the game, no problem at all. Until the you know the uh, the middle of the game, you are unlikely to be replacing it uh, until you reach the Valley of Titans. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, so you can see here 1,200 scrape uh, that we have. We also have the, uh, oh my God. All right, confiscated, confiscated, confiscated. <laughs> yeah, we also get the, um, uh, the armor that we are going to sell and then we also got some uh, loot that we are going to sell as well uh, if it is not useful. Remember to equip the outdoorsman uh, trinket if you have done like I did and uh, unequipped it because once we head outside, we really wanted to make sure we have a free uh, outdoorsman to make sure we do not walk into random encounters that can actually kill us. Now, uh, there is only one thing left to do here uh, before we return to the Ranger Citadel, and that is uh, have Ralphie talk to Jesse again. Alright, so you can see here we are ex uh, exiting uh, the no man's land, and then we'll just have to uh, come here and then go all the way up north. Alright, so let's go. All right, we'll get past the power generator. 
Don't touch the power generator, please. <laughs> All right, let's see if I'm on the right track. I am. Okay, so all the way up north. Okay, so if you're trying to exit the village, do not go through the... Uh, go through here. Uh, you will trigger the... Uh, the injured man event instead go all the way up here instead of here you go all the way up here and circle around to get to where Jesse is all right we are back at the background uh, playground hey Rangers I'm really sorry but I've got to talk to my friend Jesse over there. If you don't want to... Okay. I'm sorry, Ralphie. It was such a bad idea for us to meet at the lake. It's so... gross. Forget oh. it. We'll All find right. some other place to be alone. I'm just glad you're okay. So, so we will have to wait for the uh, little um, to conversation to, uh, to no end. No way. If they catch you in our camp, they'll report you to Master Kekaba. I'm just so tired of all this fighting. Why don't we just leave this stupid place for good? But how? We wouldn't last a day on foot. I, but I Jesse, I, I gotta go home. Another Topekin could come by at any minute and I'd be shit out of luck. See you tomorrow, Ralphie. Now, if this uh, event ended, uh, Jesse returns to her home and avoids being captured, uh, which is another plus. Uh, to making peace uh, between the Topican and the Edison camp. Now, if you talk to Ralphie again, you can uh, recruit him back. Uh, remember that if you do not talk to Ralphie uh, and exit the map, you will lose Ralphie forever. <laughs> that is what happens. So uh, instead, uh, you should talk to Ralphie. Uh, for me, I'm not going to recruit any companions. That's why I'm not talking to Ralphie again. But if you are doing your playthrough, you should, uh, if you want to get him. All right, so we are just going to head out. Uh, there are There is a fence where we can blow up and there is a cache that we can open, but we need like a brute force of very high or a um, lock pick off very high in order to open it so we're not going to try it all right so let's go all the way to the exit all right before we exit uh, a little bit of recap we enter the wasteland here go to the little mound of dirt here to dig up go all the way to the lake to uh, save Ralphie here and then we take up the turquoise here and once we are uh, done, we go to this uh, this little branch here. We go to the right side, hug the right wall, and then shoot the car bomb here. Get a, a little mount, a dirt mount here. That doesn't require perception. And once we are done, we go all the way up here to this T section, uh, and then all the way up north. Uh, uh, to the, the behind of the hobo camp and then activate the tortoise here uh, get the logbook and uh, trinket of the of Hellraiser here once we are done go all the way down south uh, reach the holiday store uh, no, no no not the holiday store sorry uh, reach the Corex arcade exchange for the thousand scrape uh, with the ET cartridge and then go to the house that is opposite to the holiday store uh, loot the weapons cache, uh, the weapon stack, but not the box or the safe, and then go to holiday store to do some buying and selling, and then we headed to the uh, no man's land right here. Uh, hug the left side of the wall because of the landmines that are planted here, and then go all the way up into this uh, uh, this waterfall and wait for the tortoise here to. Uh, to reveal the the third mount that is uh, here to take it up. Uh, 
afterwards, we will bring Ralphie back here to this little park uh, to talk with Jesse uh, to avoid Jesse getting captured. Uh, I, I also forgot to mention uh, that we have to uh, reach Parker's house to grab uh, Ralphie Parker as well. So get Ralphie Parker, uh, get her, uh, get him to talk to Jesse. Talk to him again uh, if you wanted to uh, recruit him. Uh, all this has to be done uh, when you are staying inside the map. Do not exit, do not do any of that thing. You just do it in one go or you might glitch some of them and you're going to maybe lose Ralphie for good or lose this stash for good and that will not be... <laughs> that is not good. Alright, so let's head out. Alright, so what we are going to do is that we are going to head back to the Ranger Citadel. And the way we are doing is we are going to circle around to the left side of the map. Uh, Alright, click attack. And then we escape from the portal. Yeah, because you don't want to, uh, again, as mentioned, you don't want to fail that check uh, of escape because of that 25% screwing you up. Now, perfect. You see what looks like a traveling vendor near your position. Uh, basically, every playthrough that I ran into the first traveling vendor, it is likely to be the, the weapons merchant. Uh, it is a rare merchant. You don't encounter her uh, very often. Uh, I was, fingers crossed it is. So let's investigate. All right, let's talk to the merchant. Now, you remember, uh, because of the, uh, the cash we get with Corex, we have quite a number of uh, dollars to sell. So let's talk with the... Yeah, so you can see here a bunch of weapons. Uh, you can see that there is the farmers. Uh, if if you haven't gotten the uh, uh, the farmers, you should buy it from her. However, uh, she also have the M16, which uh, does double the damage. And uh, it takes a little bit more AP to shoot. You can see here, uh, compared to the farmers, it is uh, 5 AP uh, for single shot instead of the 4, and then 7 AP for the burst shot uh, instead of the 6 AP. And um, you still want to have the M16 if you have the cash. And what do you know? We do have the cash. Uh, we have a thousand cash uh, lying around, so uh, you. You usually would be able to afford the M16 and also if you have a sniper, you should buy this M24 uh, for your sniper as well. Uh, it is the single sniper rifle that is going to help you through a huge part of the game uh, just like this M16 or just like this farmers as well. So make sure to grab these weapons if you can use them. Otherwise, there are also still some other weapons that you might be able to uh, purchase uh, like this SOSG if you have a shotgun user. Uh, this is a very good uh, weapon as well. Uh, the pickaxe you don't really need to buy because if you recruit the Takayuki uh, in the level up mine uh, event, uh, he gets the pickaxe. Uh, so you don't have to buy it. Uh, if you have a handgun user, for some reason. <laughs> uh, this, um, all right, this uh, FFS Bonato is also a good uh, weapon that you can have. Uh, if you, for some reason, have an SMG user, uh, you can get this uh, PP81. I would suggest that you get the PP81 instead of the Max 17 because a PP81 gets uh, to use the 0.38 cal ammo. Uh, you can see here. Uh, the Max 17 uh, actually uses 0.45 cal ammo, which is uh, a little bit harder to come by in the early part of the game. So uh, uh, you might end up spending cash on a weapon that you simply can't use. So other than that, you can also grab some of the uh, uh, ammo as well. For me, I only have one uh, member with me that is the assault rifle user. I already got the farmers, so that. Uh, I only have to buy the M16. 
and then you would want to buy the ammo as well if i remember correctly uh this weapons uh merchant also sells uh them for a little bit cheaper compared to Selfa as well uh and i think that's it yes yeah we, we can sell them the the useless stuff as well all right let's see uh the sunbrella we are not going to use other word uh crypto we are not gonna use okay all right i think that is all that is needed okay uh let's head back to the ranger citadel then All right. Do not forget to refill your canteens. Uh, you don't want to take dehydration damage. <laughs> they will eat into your health very quickly. I will also make sure that I am on the outdoorsman. Uh, again, you can see uh, dangerous raiders approach your position. Uh, let's attack and then escape through the portal again. Uh, simply because... <laughs> As mentioned, you don't want the 25% chance to fail to screw you up. <laughs> Royally, uh, I might add. All right, let's head to this oasis. Again, refilling the canteens up, and then it is all the way back to the Ranger Citadel. Uh, if it is run one hundred percent, we are going to run. <laughs> Yeah, you can see here, if you successfully run away from an encounter, you are going to get some XP. So, uh, it is almost negligible, but then it is still a little bit of XP, I guess. So, we are almost an hour into the game. Uh, so, let's see how we are doing. All right, so you can see here there is a, a gold, uh, the Aberforth. I will tame him uh, with this equipped. All right, let's hope that it doesn't critically fail. I hope I didn't change it. All right, don't do it to me, please. I don't want to get... God, why? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Ugh. This is wrong. All right, we go back to Selva. Let's see if we can sell anything. We don't need to, I think. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Now that we have uh, done all that, you can see we haven't entered any single bit of combat. Uh, we haven't done any other stuff. We just walk around, talk to people, duck up mounts, uh, do all sorts of things. And then we are already on level 3. And we also have a bunch of scrap uh, that we can use. We have uh, an abundance of ammo that we can use. We have abundance of... Uh, medic packs that waiting to be used we have a couple of trinkets that can help us uh, on our journey we also get the most powerful uh, weapons uh, that we can get in the arizona side as well and then we get also get some of the very good uh, the sepal rocket if your mileage might vary uh, sometimes the rng might uh, decide not to give you this uh, maybe they won't give you the mangler or the sepal rocket uh, if you get them they will be very helpful uh, in the uh, la later as well because uh, there are some tough enemies that you really wanted to just blow them up with rockets. <laughs> just just word warning, you really wanted to do that. And uh, yeah, uh, so this is a pretty good start. Uh, it ensures that you can have enough scrapes. Uh, you can have enough uh, weapons uh, upgrade that you you can have an easier time uh, doing combat and uh, also you get some of the uh, explosive as well uh, even before you enter the uh, radio tower which is the first part of the missions that you really wanted to do so you can see here search near the radio tower for the repeater unit uh, 
and you are at level three. You you <laughs> so money you got it. Uh, armor you get it. Uh, weapons you get it. Uh, so what more can you ask for? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that is uh, almost the end of the video. Uh, what I'm going to plan on is that um, if I were to do a solo uh, video, I think it won't be very interesting. I've searched for the uh, on YouTube for you know like a solo uh, video. Uh, some of them has been done uh, in the uh, non director's cut version of the game where uh, the stealth element is there. And uh, for di the director's cut version, I think they have do away with it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and there are not a lot of people who have uh, tried to document the whole uh, experience of uh, as a solo ranger. So let me know if it is a good idea. Uh, a little bit of uh, background information. I've tried it uh, a couple of times uh, before. And I, I didn't finish the game with it. I, I just tried to see how far I can get and uh, and also do some farming as well. Uh, the process is excruciatingly painful. Uh, I think it is painful to play through, then it is painful for you to watch as well because it, uh, it basically is about cheesing the game by... Uh, uh, going uh, going into every combat by just losing the line of sight uh, with your enemy and then just take a pop shot and then just uh, going back into the shadows basically every t and then just it is like this repeated a million times a million times I guarantee you it is a million times and it is not exceedingly fun I would say <laughs> but if uh, if you really wanted to see how it is done, yeah, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that if you are starting to play this game, uh, this little video here can help you ease your sufferings <laughs> in the first part of the game. Uh, the game can be a bit of a pain, uh, especially on higher difficulties, uh, but it is a very fun game. And I hope that you can enjoy it as much as I do as well. So, uh, yeah, I will be wrapping up as well. Um, before, I will be recapping a little bit on how you prepare on the characters uh, as well. It's uh, how, how you build your character, uh, the attribute points, uh, whatever makes sense, will, uh, will already be okay. But for the skills, you really need it. A uh, one point in perception and two point in outdoorsman uh, in order to all this uh, or otherwise you might end up uh, missing the the shrine that you can get the lacomatic uh, sorry uh, the the lacomatic uh, 4 to uh, 0 here uh, that grants you an other outdoorsman and then you might not be able to uh, escape the encounters uh, in the north part of the map as well uh, and once you can't escape uh, you have to do battles with them you're unlikely going to win because uh, the game is very hard <laughs> and you didn't upgrade your weapons as well uh, then uh, it will be a bad time however uh, if you do all that and uh, follow my uh, step by step guide uh, on this uh, to get the, uh, uh, the first uh, radiation suit uh, and then uh, you go to the map and then you just go to this shrine and then also there is this weapons cache here uh, and and then you just follow all the way through and go to the uh, all the way around to the north and then to the iron sea and then do all that you can get money get weapons uh, get equipment uh, look good <laughs> so yeah uh, it should be good times afterwards um just if you find uh combat to be difficult just try to uh level up your weapon skills and do some grinding before you actually head to the radio uh, tower just make sure that you are doing it on the northern side of the map particularly between the ranger citadel and the radio tower and uh, somewhere between the Iron Sea. Uh, do not go south because you trigger events and you won't be able to stop. And uh, 
yeah, and that would be bad times. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, that's it for today. Uh, let me know if the solo video, uh, the the solo playthrough, uh, will be an interesting idea. Uh, it is it something that you would like to see? Uh, do you think that it is a good thing to do? And uh, uh, how you would like to see it? Uh, maybe the full experience or just a little cut version where. Uh, you can see I'm doing uh, uh, encounters here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and then of course, uh, including all the talks with the NPCs and all the skill challenges as well. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, also, if you have any information, any more tips uh, to be uh, added to the start of the game, uh, do let me know in the session, uh, uh, comment section. Uh, it will be a little bit more fun uh, if <laughs> if we can, you know, like uh, discuss and things. I will try to um, answer all the uh, uh, the comments. I promise that I read them all. <laughs> and uh, if there are something that I, I, I can add, I will uh, I reply to it as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, this has been a little bit longer than I have expected, but uh, I really wanted to show you the whole process of how it is done. And uh, yeah, to help you get a good start for the uh, Wayson 2 Director's Cut version. So for, for the moment, I hope that you have enjoyed this video uh, and hope that it helps you a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Brian and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.